What's up, YouTube? My name is Indra, and before you go into today's video, let me ask you for one thing. If you can leave a like, thank you so much for that. It's the best way to show support. For you, so easy. For me, it can actually mean a lot. And if you like this type of content about the soccer card market, please consider also to subscribe. Two things that are super important. I have a Patreon community and a Discord server. I will leave link below the video if you want to join them. The Discord is totally free. There is no reason to not see you there. That said, let's go into the video. And I I hope you find some value. The question number one goes this way. Where would you rank numbered cards? Okay, that's <laughs> already a very difficult question. I personally, day after day, value them less because of how much of them is out there. I would value eye appealing and rarity over manufactured rarity. Example, 2017 CR7 Kaboom. Um, instead of out of 10 cards. What categorizes a solid collectible card for you? Sorry if the question is structured poorly. No, my friend, no problem at all. I actually, I, I think I understood your question quite, quite well. I think it's an amazing topic. Again, I don't expect anything different from my Patreon community, but as you can imagine, this is a very complex topic. I will try to share with you some critical thinking and at the end of the day, my perspective. That said, this is the whole topic talk uh, iconic versus rare. I believe this is a relevant topic in our market because we have many collectors with little experience. Any experienced collector understands that most cards become irrelevant over time. It's the so-called reality check that many are having, but even more will have in the future. So this pains me to say, but is the reality. A lot of people right now are seeing their modern cards going almost to zero. Oh, but this card is out of 299. Why no one cares about it? It's not the problem sometimes is not the rarity of the card is actually how relevant that card is for collectors long run and in the short term everything can get hyped to the moon but long run most things become irrelevant no matter if we are talking about pre-modern vintage but in modern this is even more evident so that's why I was saying is a reality check the concept of numbered cards is appealing let's be real because it gives you the idea that you don't need to study the market that much but this is a fallacy why rarity although an important important fundamental is just just one fundamental. There is much more that needs to be analyzed if your goal is to have a card that appreciates in the long run. This channel was created to discuss this type of topics and I believe a lot of uh, has already been, been taught uh, on this community. I don't want to give the impression that only numbered cards slash fake manufacturer rarity the name will be up to you will be in danger in the long run. No, vintage and pre-modern also face this problem. There are rare cards in pre-modern, then they fail in the other fundamentals. And that's the, the problem. People, that's what I was saying. Some people, they they look at cards and they think, okay, this is a rare card, this should be good. Uh, no, I mean, maybe, but uh, also probably no, because like I said, even rare cards, they tend to struggle in the long run if the other fundamentals are not there. That's why, uh, look, that's uh, a boring argument, I get it, uh, but here it goes. Focus on fundamentals. It does not matter the error you choose. I'm actually sharing with you three examples. There will be cards with strong fundamentals in all eras. Sometimes the price may not be what you like, but you but don't you think that buying a bunch of out of fifth cards is the solution or finding the next big guy is the solution? Maybe you get lucky and maybe you actually find some gem that everyone is not looking right now. But most likely you'll get caught into FOMO and end up doing a lot of bad decisions. Like everything in life, take it slow, uh, but try to climb the ladder. I have cards on my list for 2-3 years at this point and I'm still working to get there. Focus. I know this is kind of boring. I know staying focused is easier to say than done, but you, you have to do it. That's the reality. I will not share what cards I'm trying to buy right now, but a couple of them, I've been thinking about buying those cards two, three years ago, maybe even more. In Magic, I have cards that I've been trying to acquire for 10 years. You know, but I'm still trying to get there. It takes time. Things are not easy. I have a, a limited budget, like all of you guys. Um, but some, some people have a bigger budget than others, as you can imagine, and some people have bigger goals than others. So a lot of things that uh, that play a role 
in what you are talking about, but you have to stay focused. That's the reality. There is nothing you, you can do against that uh, unless uh, you just go in a path that will be catastrophic. Uh, I talked about this recently, but the reality is that many prefer to focus on the next Zidane rather than buying the real Zidane. It blows my mind every time I see this type of narratives, but trust me, they are out there. It seems counterproductive, but it's human nature. A criticism I often receive is that I always mention the same cards as sets. If you guys go to my comments, uh, to be fair, 99% is love, but sometimes I, I, I see people saying, oh, Andre is talking always about Messi rookies, about Cristiano Ronaldo rookies. Oh, Andre just talks about Maradona, Pelé, Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi. Andre talks, when, he, when Andre talks about modern, is always the same sets. He stops Chrome and Prism, nothing more than that. Uh, well, this for me is actually a compliment, you know, uh, why? Uh, it only shows that my consistency and discipline I have maintain, maintained over these two years on YouTube. Of course, I will continue to say similar things if the fundamentals are still strong. And the, the examples I was sharing with you, they still have strong fundamentals. Do I believe Messi rookies will do well long run? 100% do I think right now could be a time where you go more for condition rarity, try to upgrade your Messi rookies to PSA 8, BGS 8, BGS 9, PSA 9, whatever the, the, the grading company. Yes, I, I think that that's probably a great time to do it. So I think Cristiano Ronaldo rookies are probably getting to a point that uh, becomes very tempting to put money into the Cristiano Ronaldo market. Yes, I think Maradona and Pelé are still great players to collect, specific if you go to, to, to the early stuff, specific if you go for things with true rarity or focus on condition rarity in very specific cards. Yes, do I think modern still have opportunity? Yes, but I will not try to invent the wheel. I will focus on Prism and Chrome. And if you want to, to, to go a bit high-end, even though Prism and Chrome are very expensive for the lower number stuff, try to focus on war, try to focus on flawless. Do I think buying a new kid nowadays or buying a new set that, that ended up coming last year is a good idea? Probably not. That's the reality. Sorry for the rant, but at the end of the day, fundamentals and people tend to forget about this. They get tired of chasing a goal because sometimes chasing a goal specific if it's a goal with great fundamentals could be could be difficult, could take you years, but you have to stay focused. I know I'm up repeating myself quite a lot there. I know I, I was a bit harsh maybe for, for some people right there, but that's the reality, my friend. So guys, quick pause on this one, but trust me, it's an important message. Recently, I became affiliated with BLCC, and uh, I believe they are the best in the business. Uh, if you like to buy pre-modern and modern uh, and even vintage, they are uh, probably the best place you can find uh, for the soccer card market. Uh, if you want to support the channel and you don't need to pay me anything, just click on the links I will leave below the video for BLCC, or you can even scan the QR code you are seeing on the screen. Uh, apart from that, I will try to keep all the links updated instead of just seeing you to PLCC direct, I will try from time to time to send you to a deal that I find quite amazing there. That said, let's continue with this video and I hope you have fun. Now, examples of cards with excellent fundamentals. Um, and uh, I end up bringing a bit of everything. Let's start with Magic. That's one of my passions, as you guys know. And now I will speak a bit of Shinies for a lot of you guys. But trust me, this is actually a great example. So, before I actually start talking about uh, all the three cards, I end up putting some fundamentals. There is more, by the way, but some that I tend to care below uh, this, this image. History, lore, organic demand, lineage, scarcity slash rarity. Both are connected, but they are two different things. And I appeal, even though I appealing is the one that I uh, care the least. I also believe is important, but I care the least. Uh, so all the cards you are seeing on the screen, I believe they check all the boxes. Let's start with Birds of Paradise. This is the first set ever in Magic the Gathering. This Birds of Paradise is, the, is Alpha Edition. It's the most iconic green creature in the game until this day. Production was 1.3k for the Alpha set, or 1.1. Now I'm not sure, but is irrelevant. Uh, organic Scarcity, I Appeal. So uh, I Appeal, again, a relative, but Mark Paul, the artist that this, this card is a very, very known artist in uh, Magic the Gathering. You can see, checks all the box. Historic TCG, this goes into history and lore. Lore also goes into this being the most iconic creature in, uh, in, the, in the game. Sp not the most iconic creature in the game, I'm sorry. The most iconic green creature in the game. That could be debatable, but it is at least top three, top five. 
Uh, organic demand, uh, of course, I mean, magic have been growing in the last uh, 30 years quite a lot, and the demand for the rare sets uh, always have been there. Lineage, I mean, <laughs> it's the first set, is uh, Wizards of the Ghost, I, I don't have to explain that much. Scarcity slash rarity is also there, there is scarcity, but there is also strong rarity, and I appeal, like I was explaining, I also believe is part of this card. There is more fundamentals, 100%. Those are the ones I tend to care at least at the first glance I look uh, when I look at, uh, at one card. Now let's go to, to an example that you guys may like a bit more. Modric, Top Scrum, I end up choosing the gold parallel. You could put other parallels, but I think the gold is, is nice because have, uh, have strong rarity. Out of 50 is a fairly difficult card to find, let's be real. Why I like this card? Well, it's the first top scrum in soccer. This automatic means what? A bit of lore, lineage is strong, all-time great player. This goes into the history of the, of the player. This goes into greatness. That is another fundamental that we can add when we talk about sports. Um, special card for him, what I mean with this, um, his rookies are quite difficult to find and you don't have very good options with the Real Madrid kit. This one, I think, is one of the best. I also like the Banyu Treble, for example, but th there is more, too, to be fair. But I think this is one of the best options. Strong rarity, you'll say, okay, that's manufacture um, scarcity slash rarity. At the end of the day, that does not matter in my perspective as long the other fundamentals are there. So I'm actually trying to answer your question right now direct. I don't mind uh, numbered cards. What I do not like in numbered cards is when rarity is the only uh, good fundamental they have. This card is not uh, uh, like that. This card have rarity, and you can say manufacture rarity, but also have strong fundamentals. Organic demand. This set have been uh, is one of is in my perspective with Prism is 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 the two sets in modern that people collect the most and one of the most beautiful sets. Like I said, this is more relative, but if you look on Discord on Instagram, people tend to agree that the 2017 top scrum is uh, an amazing set when it comes to eye appealing. And to finish this, uh, let's go to a sticker. I mean, uh, Van Basten, three times uh, Ballon d'Or, a player that uh, I believe we should all talk a bit more, all time great. This card have a lot of uh, lore slash history among pre-modern slash vintage collectors, strong rarity plus just one rookie, all-time great and organic demand, I appeal, I guess, could be a bit more relative. Do I think if you want to invest in a card long run, uh, you have to check all the boxes? No, not, not at all, but I think you have to check a lot of them, okay? Look, I, I don't think the eye appealing on the Van Basten sticker is the best, for example, but um, the other fundamentals are strong, and you may disagree, you may think that the sticker looks looks nice. So at the end of the day, that, that's why I was saying the, the eye appealing fundamental is one that I tend to care the least. I hope you guys enjoyed this um, this uh, this video. This was a, a question that I got on my Patreon community. I will also put this on YouTube. Check all the links below the video like I, I tend to say. And let's move on to the question number two. If you are on YouTube, the video ends here. And that's everything for today, my friends. I really hope you end up enjoying this video. If that's the case, and I know I'm annoying with this, but do not forget to leave a like, helps tremendous. Also, subscribe to the channel. Take a look at all the links I leave below the video. I tend to leave surprises there, or even scan the QR code you are seeing on the screen. Bye.